Nowadays, mobile phones are everywhere. According to International Telecom Union, the number of active mobile connections in world jumped dramatically. For 100 people, the number went from around 60 in 2008 to 107 in 2018. With growing number of mobile users, the area to provide mobile coverage is also increasing. Also, the mobile technology itself is constantly changing. Each time we look at a mobile phone feature, we find a number of frequencies just like we see here. And this list changes from country to country and also with time. But what do this number mean and how are mobile frequencies selected? Hi viewers, in this part of series about microwave frequency band, we are going to answer this question. Let's get started by looking at the table here. This shows which frequencies are used by 2G, 3G and 4G. Since in the next video, we are going to see about 5G in detail, we won't be seeing much about 5G here. In this table here, I want to point out a trend. Newer generation mobile network have higher frequencies. For example, the highest frequency of 2G was 1.8 GHz, but the highest frequency of 4G is 2.5 GHz. This is because higher frequency can provide high bandwidth, that is, high download speed even when more people are using the service. Since the newer generation of mobile communication looks to provide faster service, they tend to prefer higher frequencies. However, these frequencies are useful only for smaller distance from their cellular tower. So, to provide coverage to larger area, more towers are needed compared to lower frequencies. This means that operating higher frequency spectrum is very very expensive for mobile operators. In fact, the third and fourth largest American mobile telecom companies want to merge and they say that this is the only way they can launch a nationwide 5G service. To better understand why it's so, let us look at the graph from the research report created by Morgan Stanley. We can see here that 2.5 GHz signal has good signal strength for only 0.5 miles from the tower. On the other hand, a 700 MHz signal has a similar signal strength for almost 5 miles from tower. Also, the second picture shows that by using 700 MHz compared to 1900 MHz, the number of cell towers can be reduced by 50%. So, in less populated area, the operator can use a lower frequency whereby they can utilize fewer cellular towers to cover larger area. An example of this is Extended Range LTE campaign by T-Mobile company in United States. T-Mobile has been aggressively using lower frequencies like 600 and 700 MHz to provide coverage to larger area using fewer number of towers, especially where the population is low. However, in densely populated area, the operator may still use the higher frequency as only they can provide high bandwidth, that is to support many people using the service at same time. So the mobile operators may use high and low frequencies depending on number of users in that area. At this point, I would like to clarify that this video explains the frequency selection process based only on physics. However, the frequency selection may also be impacted by other economic factors like to which spectrum the operator has license to and if the operator owns the tower or not and so on. Almost at the end of the video, let us summarize what we just saw here. We saw that higher frequency signals have exponential decrease in coverage area compared to lower frequencies. Also, higher the frequency, the harder it becomes to provide coverage inside a building. This means that higher frequency need more tower compared to lower frequencies to provide same level of coverage. This dramatically increases the cost of operating higher frequency signal. And this was the case with 4G internet that has a highest frequency of 2.5 GHz. In the next video where we will see about 5G, we will understand that this is the reason behind why early users of 5G communication faced lot of problems. Alright viewers, thank you for watching this video. Do check out the next video which talks in detail about 5G communication.